Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Konbangwa from Tokyo. And uh, yeah, good morning for everybody there in the States who's just getting up, grabbing their coffee. Uh, trophy dolphins in the house here in Japan saying, sup gangsters. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Count Yoli's in the house as well saying, gentlemen, get up, get ready. Uh, get ready for the day that is coming. Um, Bitcoin is changing in price above 12,000. Oh my God, it's above 12,000, right? I think like, what was it? Maybe less than just like a week, two weeks ago, we were like, oh my God, it's above 9,000. Bitcoin's above 9,000. If you don't know that meme, check it out um, with uh, Dragon Ball Z. But yeah, um, you know, we're celebrating again because, you know, Bitcoin's continuing to kind of defy gravity here a little bit, um, being above 12K at the moment. Um, basically, nobody in the world currently knows what the hell Bitcoin is doing and where the hell it is going. So today, let's try to uh, navigate these uh, new crypto seas as uh, he's not here right now, he probably checks in around about 50 minutes from now. The famous Winston Wolf says, uh, Cryptopher Columbus is uh, setting his uh, journey out into the sea in this new world of cryptocurrencies. Um, yeah, everybody and anybody who's been in the crypto game for a long time or a short time is very much trying to make sense of everything that's happening in the market. So let's take a look and let's try to um, make some logic to it. Um, but at the same time, this is a global phenomenon, uh, Bitcoin is. So trying to distill a global phenomenon into one hour of content and saying, hey, this is exactly what's gonna happen is probably uh, idiotic in a way. Um, so at the same time, you know, I give the information that I accumulate throughout the day um, and cu accumulate throughout the week and accumulate even throughout the years. And that's what I aim to give you guys today and every day. Um, but at the same time, we are very privileged to have a very intelligent group of men here. Um, like I said yesterday, a lot of people on Twitter, they get, you know, free content, free uh, charting and analysis by seasoned veterans, both from the traditional uh, stock uh, and asset area, as well as the cryptocurrency area. And yet they still complain and they cry when they follow somebody else's advice and they lose money. They don't take responsibility yet. To be honest, this is amazing to me. I have not had a person in our community, part of the moon gang, hashtag moon gang, uh, you can copyright that from MLD, but basically our group of guys actually ha takes responsibility. Amazing. A group of people who actually take what they hear, don't believe it for everything, put a grain of salt to it, and then actually do their own research and figure it out for their, themselves. And then they take responsibility on whatever actions they do for their own trading. You know, this is a novel idea for the world of the internet where people, you know, basically say, give me everything for free and then uh, blame you if it doesn't work out. <laughs> so I, I'm amazed that we are better than 99.9% .9 of the rest of the internet. And for everybody here watching this show, you are truly uh, <laughs> moon gang, poon gang, baby. Yeah, exactly. You got uh, got a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, and then you got you know you got your muscle gang for column C. Uh, brought to you by Big Googs, uh, who has yet to jump into uh, the the BTC chat. Um, but yeah, he's over on the MLD platform. So, anyways. Um, yeah, <laughs> that threw me off there for a second. I like that, uh, Jacob, it's good, good stuff. Um, so yeah, today, um, if you're new to this channel, uh, of course, I do have to show myself, so please excuse me while I say, please press the subscribe bell up at, top, up at the top, that little bell up in there, that corner. Um, press that bell if you are new to this channel, which according to my analytics, 70% of our audience is uh, subscribed and then 30% of people who jump on here pay attention longer than the people who are subscribed um, and they have not yet subscribed. So please press that bell up at the top. 
um, smash it. And then everybody who's here, of course, either now or on the replay, smash the likes. We've been getting some good comments. Uh, I like that stuff. So uh, it helps boost me in the algorithm of YouTube and gets us out to a wider audience. So smash uh, the comments either in the live chat or down below. Um, just type whatever. You can write the Moon Gang Poon Gang or you can write um, whatever you like. You know, unless it's extremely offensive, uh, I won't ban you. <laughs> so for the most part, it's okay. And then I've also been getting some good consults uh, coming in. So people who have been watching this kind of as ghosts, but have been paying attention to what's happening with Bitcoin. If you want to know uh, more about your specific situation, how to profit um, immediately, um, or at least within the next three months, um, please send me an email to charlie at cultivatecrypto.com or go down to the comment section below or the description below and you can find my website and my email there to get in touch with me. Um, it's dirt cheap, 75 bucks an hour. And if you're putting in, you know, 500, you know, 600 or a thousand bucks, you know, 75 bucks to make profit, um, you know, within the next, you know, couple of months on that is nothing pocket change, right? Um, so everybody who's done my consults, who has taken action, which is 90% of you guys, um, has profited uh, since we started this thing in February, March. Um, so be part of the Moon Gang. If you want to be part of the Poon Gang, go over to the MLG's channel after this. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, just jump on that uh, as you like. And if you're just a, a, a very, um, what do you call it, generous soul, um, you can go to the Stream Labs link below and just tip me, you know, whatever you like for some pizza money. Or you can go down and tip me in Bitcoin too. That's cool. Um, whatever you like. But I do have to uh, shill myself. So uh, excuse me while I do that. It looks like I didn't lose too many of followers or too many of you guys during that time. So great. Um, let's move on. And I will be addressing the chat, you know, of course, throughout the show. But then I'll also be um, doing the show. So sometimes I get a little bit excited. I speak kind of fast. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more aware of my speed and then also, you know, making sure that we don't veer off the topic too much. Um, but I love the things uh, that you guys say. So it's always fun to engage with the chat. So Nick says, hey, Charlie, Bitcoin is jumping on a trampoline as far as I see it. The price can't seem to hold in one area that long at all. Welcome to the crypto world, um, Nick. So yeah, I, I met Nick when I went to New York and he's an amazing guy. Um, super smart and he knows that Bitcoin is better than any other asset and Nick you're in pure profit right so the main thing is keep how to keep that profit right so that's what the stop loss is for all the noise all the fluctuation in between is basically just noise and compared to the prices that Bitcoin used to see the fluctuations that it used to see in the past um, the prices seem higher now, the dollar fluctuations seem higher, but the percentage of fluctuation is actually lower. Um, and I discussed that in yesterday's show, um, showing the long-term price chart um, from lows to highs in the, uh, you know, on the weekly chart. And believe it or not, Bitcoin is becoming less and less volatile, which means more and more people are using it. And that will continue to be the case. So even though it seems, you know, like a thousand or two thousand dollar price drop is extremely large, of course it is. You know, if you hold, own a whole coin, uh, it definitely feels that way. But if you're in profit, um, you know, you have to keep your eye on the price. So today, uh, the topic is: Will Bitcoin hold support above this 10k mark? Will we stop this trampoline and then you know bounce to the moon, basically? Um, I'll give a case for and against that um, both ways. And we got the M-O-O-N-G. Come on, Emily D, can you write it fast enough? A-N-G, gang, moon gang, from Modern Life Dating himself, coming out here to support the channel. Um, can we tip you a hat? Why not, I guess, uh, Trophy Dolphin, if you want to uh, buy me a hat, sure. And uh, we got the P-O-O-N. Come on, we got to get the G, the A, the N, the G. Yeah, there we go. We got the Poon Gang as well. That's, you know, we got both. You know, we got the best of both worlds. And uh, we need big Googs to jump in here to get the uh, the uh, the Muscle Gang. I don't know what kind of slang you want to put with that. But, um, you know, let's have fun. It's a Friday. Um, 
let's just be silly. And uh, at the same time, though, let's be serious. Be serious, guys. Come on. But yeah. Um, so Nick, yeah, this volatility is natural with Bitcoin. Um, don't let it get to you. Um, look at where your profit zone is and where your losses are and keep increasing that stop loss that will ensure that no matter what the fluctuations are, that you stay in profit. Um, so I'll get to that in more detail later in the show. Let's jump over to the most important segment of our show, which is the meme or memes. Sometimes we have multiple of the day. Um, so today, let me just check here. And just before we do that, I do want to show myself again. Um, please go over to uh, you or Twitter um, to subscribe to our Cultivate Crypto on Twitter. Um, I haven't been tweeting as much in the last two days, but I'll probably go on a tweet storm this weekend or something. Um, but yeah, you can uh, see more info on just kind of ad lib stuff here. Um, and yeah, so go there and follow me on Twitter if you like the Twitter medium. But let's check out a couple of memes for today um, that are quite fitting uh, for what's happening right now in Bitcoin. So <laughs> some of you guys may or may not know all of these people. You may know some of them. You may not know all of them. I want to explain it to you. But basically, we have quite a few characters um, giving you advice. Uh, I'm I'm the newest character on the crypto scene. I'm still a fledgling, you know, amoeba in this world of crypto, uh, you know, advice uh, and everything. But um, we got, you know, the man himself, John McAfee, holding a gun to his head. Got Charlie, um, the other Charlie, uh, Charlie Shrem, uh, Vitalik Buterin, Roger Ver, and so forth um, here. But basically, what are their personalities? We basically have someone who is a paid shill pump and dumper. Um, he'll shill anything as long as he can make some money on it. Then we actually have a convicted felon. Um, we have a guy who says um, he built an illegal security offering platform, you know, pumped up the price of all the crypto market through his ICOs. Then we have an ICO advisor. Um, he's an advisor to everything. And he's also a convicted felon. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is a meme, so don't take it too seriously. Um, also in the middle here, we have a guy who is a cat in, a, in an astronaut suit with the doge dog in the moon, in the face of the moon behind him. He advocates that you hodl or hold your assets that lost 85% of its value in 2018. Just keep holding, moon gang. Just keep holding um, if you follow uh, hodlnut. And uh, this other guy over here, he says ad he admits that he doesn't know that much, but he speaks authoritatively anyways. Right, very clean, clean cut. Um, you can trust him. He's white, kind of image. Um, <laughs> then we have CZ down here in the bottom left. Um, he sells access to an actual pump, pump and dump platform um, to make him billions of dollars. Um, unfortunately, in the middle here, we also have a, a convicted sex offender. And then down at the bottom right, we have a guy named Charlie Lee who wears a hodl shirt. Yet he sold 100% of his holdings in the coin that he built himself um, at the top of the market back in 2017. Um, so, you know, this is quite the market. <laughs> we have so many characters, so many people that um, are telling you different things, don't believe everything you hear. And that's why I love this group of guys is because, you know, I'm kind of your gateway into this new crypto world for a lot of the guys that are new to crypto and you know, a lot of you guys who've followed me have been, well, actually everybody who's followed me is basically in profit. And then, you know, I give you kind of the booster platform or the springboard um, to go and then learn this shit on yourself. But these are the types of people, um, you know, just kind of as a small, um, you know, I don't know, test case uh, of the kind of people that we have uh, giving advice in this field. So, it is the Wild West um, and it, it is maturing, but it is still an area where you just got everybody and anybody, you know, giving different information. So it is a little bit crazy. And I try to be a person who distills that information and gives it to you, you know, straight and basically says, you know, these are the possibilities, but basically this is the bullshit and this is the stuff that you could probably uh, hang your hat on. 
And, you know, while other people have, how would I best say it, um, agendas or, um, you know, they have a pre, you know, I don't know, they have a bias basically towards one side or another for what benefits them. So whenever you go into a financial market, the thing that you always want to understand is what benefits whom and why are people talking about this um, and why are they talking about it in a certain way? How does that benefit them? Um, so for me, I just broke 100 followers on YouTube. Thank you very much, guys, um, for subscribers. I also have 114 on Twitter. Um, and I have about you know 80 or so in our email, direct email newsletter group. So we're just getting started here um, on my platform. I'm nobody in this field yet. Um, but I do have a lot of good knowledge to give upon you guys. So my goal during this whole bull market and over the next few years is to kind of cut through the bullshit um, and just show you guys, you know, what the difference is um, with, you know, information that's out there. So and then you can use that to, um, you know, that logic and that information to decide for yourself what is real and what is not. Um, so, yeah. Um, this is just a meme, but it has actually quite a good bit of truth in it. Um, we have Zuck Nation turning in. I haven't seen you in a while. It's good. Hey, Charlie. Hey, MLD. And then we have uh, Tony S. Uh, he was buying like crazy yesterday. That's good. That's actually good. Buy when others are fearful. Um, that's very good. Uh, so what up, Moon Gang? Um, then let's go to the second meme for today, which this one doesn't have any audio. And I don't want to do the voices too much because I'm not really a character voice actor, but I'll try. Um, we got a minute here of um, Warren Buffett and uh, Charlie from 60 Minutes uh, talking about Bitcoin. So I'll, I'll do a little bit of narration maybe, I guess, um, but mainly uh, I'll just let you guys read the subtitles. So let me put this on large and let me make sure. I think that'll be, I think you can see everything if I put it on large, can't you? I'll read the subtitles because my picture may block some of them if I put it on large screen. Anyways, let's take a look. So last week, you told us about your move into crypto. How is it going so far? It's fine, thanks. Registered on Binance. So many coins on there. I call it Buffett Shitcoin Buffet. Which coins did you buy? Oh, I bought, I brought a list. I bought in some really promising coins, Ripple, Tron, Cardano. Some of them even have working websites. Impressive. It must have been a lot of work reading all of those white papers. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what is your current portfolio value? A solid $320 up from 820 yesterday. Didn't you start with 88.2 billion? Uh, mm. Don't day trade. <laughs> no further comment. Silence. Dear viewers, let this be a lesson to you. Don't day trade. Or you will end up like this guy. <laughs> Buy BitConnect. Great team. Great team. <laughs> so yeah, I, I hope my, uh, my narration did that justice. Um, but yeah, you can find that on the uh, Reddit, subreddit uh, for our Bitcoin uh if you want to find that meme a little bit more. But basically, um, in a nutshell, don't buy shit coins uh, because, uh, yeah, you'll get wrecked even like Warren Buffett. Um, anyways, uh, those are the two memes for the day. Got to start it out light. Um, other thing that I want to mention uh, before we jump into the price of Bitcoin for today is I mentioned that a lot of people don't really understand where Bitcoin's going right now. Basically, nobody really knows. Um, everybody's calling right now either for above 20,000 or, you know, back down to 1,000, which actually we haven't had since 2013 um, or, well, 2015. But anyways, you know, we got extremes on either end that people are calling for, right? So it's kind of crazy. And then also people are trying to attribute news to why the last $2,000 price drop in Bitcoin happened. Um, so basically my philosophy with this is that the news follows the price. The news does not cause the price to actually happen. 
Um, so people's uh, emotions and you know the ways they act actually precede the news, and the news then uh, comes out to uh, explain or you know uh, give a reason for what actually happened. So right now you'll probably see on a lot of YouTube videos or even you know other places such as CNBC that a lot of people, even Mike Novogratz, if you don't know who he is, Google him, um, he says that uh, the Libra coin is the reason for the last pump, um, even though when Libra first was announced, Bitcoin was already at $9,000. So going from that 3,100 to 9,000 was you know the natural market. And then the last you know 3,000 or $4,000 from 9,000 until 13 was because of Libra. Um, I don't know. I don't really think the news um, makes that big of a difference. And there's a lot of conspiracy theories with Facebook and Libra. And in the end, yeah, it affects the price for sure. But does it affect the price as the sole contributor to going up that much in that short period of time over the last few weeks? Probably not. So don't take all of that news at face value. People are just giving their own opinions and they're giving it authoritatively like it is gospel. So um, they want you to listen to them. So, you know, that's why they explain it in such a way. Um, personally, I don't believe half of what I see out there. I take it all with a grain of salt and then try to form my own opinion. Um, so I kind of suggest that you do the same. Um, also, um, you know, people are saying, you know, Bitcoin is going to pump or it's going to dump. Um, probably the truth is somewhere in between. So we'll look at that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, uh, don't believe everything you hear, even if it is from a trusted news source such as CNBC. Um, they're kind of a counter indicator in this market anyway. Um, I do want to actually do one thing which is somewhat new. Uh, good morning, Aaron Wolf. Uh, sup and uh, sup, Cody. I uh, hope you're getting uh, a good workout on the ellipticals today or whatever workout you're doing uh, during the show here. Um, so I do want to mention one thing which is something I just thought of, which might be a good idea, is just to kind of give a shout out now that we broke 100 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Just a shout out, quick shout out to uh, the people who um, have joined in the last you know week or so. Um, so we have Aquanaut ST1, uh, thank you very much, Blue Rum 618, uh, Valak uh, Angel Villaharo, I can't even pronounce it, Villaharo. Uh, Leonardo, Farias, uh, Sven Wusthof, uh, M. Garcia, Claudia Dorotea, uh, Kyle Trong, and Envision Sky Limit, which sounds like a real name. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you guys for subscribing to the channel, paying attention to us, whether whether it's on the live chat or um, you know once a week or during the replay, whatever, it's all good. Um, and then I had a few others that showed up in my email, but... Um, yeah, I don't have that list right on me right now. So anyways, thank you to you guys. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the bell at the top and subscribe if you're watching me now. David B, you're not on my list. Come on. Oh, maybe you showed up in my email. Have you subscribed? If you if you subscribed, uh, I appreciate that you jumped into the chat. So David B, uh, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't hit that bell as hard as you can, uh, make it ring, make it ring. Um, <laughs> fake news congrats charlie uh, okay <laughs> and then uh trophy alpha mentions what are you currently doing are you still stacking satoshis or just waiting bye 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 so yes right now your main action in this market should be buying um meaning that you if you have extra powder dry powder to be buying new bitcoin that you should be continuing to buy if you're basically all in and you've already put whatever you want to put into the your Bitcoin, then um, you want to wait for uh, a decisive, obvious downtrend, which the last downtrend of the last couple of thousand dollars took a lot of people by surprise. A lot of people were bullish up until then. Um, so yeah, uh, I didn't stack the last bit. I have my stop loss at $10,500 about. Um, and so we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, right now, basically just waiting to see how this shakes out. Um, <laughs> Cody says he's doing his chesticles today. Uh, congrats on the 100. Uh, sounds good. Uh, yeah, 
that's that's a good mix. Why not? Um, <laughs> so let's move over to, over to the price of Bitcoin and we'll talk about the short term price and then we'll get into. So basically from here on out, we'll talk about the short short term price of Bitcoin. Then we'll move into a couple altcoins just to see if there's some pulses happening in that space and what that might tell us. Um, and then we'll go to the topic for today um, here in about five minutes, um, which is uh, will Bitcoin hold the support above 10K? So on the short term price action, um, let me zoom this a little bit bigger here on the short term. So we're looking here at the, and oh, I, yeah, I got it shared on the screen there, good. Um, so I, we have this Bitcoin to USD on the weekly chart, meaning each candle is a week of price action. Since December of 2018, we've been making this amazing push up. We've been basically slicing through resistance areas like butter. Um, so the first one, which I called back in February, March, I said, if Bitcoin and you know, Cody is a testament to this, but also um, the guys who've been watching the Tokyo Crypto Show and this show since its beginning um, back in February, March. Um, we said if it broke 4,000, 4,200, um, then Bitcoin would be a full on bear uh, bull market, um, which it did in two hours here on April 1st, broke up, consolidated a little bit. And that's where I got most of my current position, my current long at $5,050. Um, some of the guys who've been watching us actually preempted me and got in this 4,000 range, which is great. Um, so good on you guys. Um, but yeah, um, this area here, if you didn't know that we're already in a bull market, then basically you were asleep. But a lot of people didn't want to be seen as wrong. So they didn't call it until we got to the current area, right? So um, we tend to, I don't, I don't really care so much if I'm wrong. Um, but I tend to tell you guys what I think in the moment um, and give you the logic and then you can take the rest and then make your own logic out of that. Otherwise, there are some people who say, hey, I'm gonna wait to make a call because I don't wanna see be seen on social media as being wrong. Um, actually, I mean, I do care if I'm wrong, of course, but at the same time, uh, I wanna give you guys, you know, a play by play in the moment here. Um, because no human being can predict this stuff. Um, everybody's trying to predict it crazily right now. Um, but at the moment, um, you know, you just kind of have to roll with the punches with Bitcoin. And so I called that long here. Um, it did uh, go up and then we've had some uh, stuff uh, going up and down, but we broke through this 6K resistance pretty easily like butter. Um, and also this, uh, over the last couple of weeks, this 10 to... Uh, 11.5k um, we broke through quite well and we're still above that right now but the interesting part on this weekly pattern here is if I zoom in this wick within the current week between um, this resistant well it's actually this area of non-resistance so kind of bouncing between resistance zones right now so um, this is a little bit uh, of the topic to come you know, once we get into the main topic, but basically um, we could be channeling here uh, between these resistance zones um, and we may be holding that 10K support um, within this resist within this resistance turned support. Um, so yeah, that's kind of one thing to look at right now, but on the weekly chart, you can see that we basically broke through the top of that 11.5K resistance. We went up all the way to the next resistance level of 13,500, got rejected. And so now it seems like we're bouncing in between there, but I'll talk about that a little bit more later. So that's the short term price action. Um, even more short term, looking at this chart here. Um, basically, we were talking about this final fifth wave. So again, looking at this long chart, we have a one, two, three, four, and five before we have a correction. And so we're in this final fifth wave. Of that fifth wave, there are five waves. So we had that one, two, three, four, and we're currently in that final stage. And man, this is kind of crazy. Um, I mean, it is a little bit crazy even for Bitcoin that we had a, a full wave one up and then it looks like a full wave two down back to the beginning of the breakout, which is 
okay and does happen in Elliott waves. I even told you guys as a maximum kind of um, warning, you know, when we were getting up towards this level that um, a wave one can actually, or wave two can actually come down to the base of wave one, which is what we've seen so far. And we did break that um, 10.5K area ever so briefly three times um, within the last 24 hours. Um, but we're still holding this bullish pattern. Um, so right now, um, in the last two hours, we went from 11,800 up to 12,100, back down to 11,800. Um, so Bitcoin's still trying to figure out what to do. In the short term, if I'm going to stick to this um, five wave sub count of the last fifth wave, what I would say is basically we have an A, I'll just, let me put that in here. Um, we have an A, B, and then we still have another retest of that 10.5K coming down in what we would call the final C wave. And then if that holds, and then we get a lot of buying volume here towards the end of the month, beginning of July, um, basically probably going down over the weekend and then having a chance to push up here uh, early next week and then having next week be um, that impulse of wave three and then going back and trying to break above that high of 13,800. That would be the bull case scenario and I'll get into the details of that once we get into the, into the topic. Um, but that's what I see for the short term here if we still hold with this count. Of course, we could be wrong. So I also, later in the show, I will get into what's the case for if we break below this 10,500, do we see four digit Bitcoin again within the next week here? Um, so I'll get into all of that here um, pretty soon. Um, so yeah, that's what we see with the short term price currently. Also, the this is actually very, very good news. Um, this is crypto fear greed index is something that we've been looking at. We haven't been trading on it, but we've been looking at it because I believe every time you have something, you know, that can be added to your tool set, why not? Um, for me, I use Elliott waves mainly. And then I also use Bitcoin cycles as my main two tools. But I, of course, I use moving averages. I use Bollinger Bands. I use an estimated moving average for short term support. Um, and volume, of course, I use all these other things uh, to supplement and just to either show, confirm what I'm seeing or show faults in what I'm seeing. And so this crypto fear greed index I use as something that um, could show either a fault in what we're seeing or just kind of a, a warning sign or a barometer um, for what we're seeing. And right now, the interesting thing about this is that yesterday we were at this area, which I wanted to see. I wanted to see us get into the 90s because this was only available since February 1st of 2018 when we were basically starting the bear market. And so we really only have data here uh, of the fear greed index in a bear market. We don't have any data from a true bull market, which we're in now uh, since December. And so I wanted to see that 90 to 100 range, which we did see uh, over the last couple of days, we went from 83 last week to 92 yesterday, which um, is also one of the reasons why maybe some of the smart money started to drop the price, started to drop their Bitcoin kind of like hot potatoes at that time. And now we actually got into the greed level of 62, which for a bear for a bull market seems to be actually slight fear. Um, so you can probably tell from some of the comments in the chat. I can definitely tell by the comments I get on Twitter and the comments I get in my email and the comments I get in this show that actually people who are still bullish and people who, you know, you know, definitely have invested in Bitcoin, even if they're in profit, are having a bit of fear. And so that goes from extreme greed just to normal greed, which actually is a very good sign of a cool off. And now Bitcoin has been a little bit schizophrenic or uh, bipolar, whatever you want to call it, um, over the last one month, um, right? In early June, we had a, a low here on June 5th of 27 on the fear greed index, which was a very normal point for the bear market. And so on June 5th, what was the price? 
let's actually zoom out here and put this on like a uh, on a daily chart to see that. So this is just kind of an experiment here. But on a daily chart, what did June 5th show? June 5th actually showed us a low of 7,700 roughly, right? Around that period of time, we actually had a breakdown. We got a bit of fear back in the market and that allowed us to take the next parabolic or in, uh, very high increase that we've seen over the last one month. So that's good. That's kind of an interesting thing of how this system works. And then since then, we built up to the greed of 92 uh, on, you know, basically yesterday or the last two days, um, which saw the price go from 13,000 down here back to the retest of 10.5K, right? And then now back on this fear greed index, we're back at 62, which is kind of halfway in between that 27 and 92, right? We're just back in the middle. We're not greedy, we're not fearful. People are just kind of taking a stop, taking a look at the market and saying, hmm, what is Bitcoin gonna do, do next? And so I see that as still bullish and still um, showing that this count uh, going up uh, above that last high of 13, 14,000 is still very possible. Um, so that's the short term you know, use of that uh, fear greed index here. Um, so it's good that we get a little bit of fear in the market. You want to be buying when others are fearful and then selling when people are greedy. Um, of course, I don't base my sell, sales or my buys on this fear greed index, but it is just something that we're looking at as a test here over the next basically one quarter to see if this is a good barometer in a bull market or not. Um, in the bear market, it was a decent barometer, so I think it could be something that is somewhat useful. Um, but the sign that it shows us today is that we are at minimal greed, which means um, not bad for Bitcoin, actually pretty good. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the chat. Um, Nick says, from what I saw, the price briefly dipped below 10,500. Yes, um, your shares were not sold, I guess. Uh, good thing since it bounced back up quickly. Um, Charlie, do you have a bandit in some burn cream I can borrow? <laughs> Ernie says, uh, I don't, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I know everybody gets a little bit burnt in this market. And um, yeah, actually during these times below here, one way to set your stop loss is that um, basically you set your stop loss with a certain range. And if you set it between like, hey, you get your first warning signal at 10,500. And then uh, once that hits, it actually triggers your sell once it gets to a certain price. Um, I still make that wide as well. Um, so if you can make, you know, your stop loss, basically um, your warning signal as 10,500 and then your actual sell a little bit below that, I would say 10.2K right now as your actual sell point would be still low enough so that you don't get uh, taken out during these wicks below. Um, or if you want to be even more, you know, uh, strong with it, strong hands, I would say, you know, 10 thousand and fifty would be a good area that if it did really break break below ten thousand fifty and you got your sell order in during that time um then that would be a, a clear downtrend so um yeah something like that would be better um ej weir is in the house uh good morning nice to see you he says hi do you mind crypto as well uh no q a by all means q a man throw in a question whatever you want to say um is fine i go about my topic what i have set out for the day um, and then as you guys put stuff in the chat, I uh, talk about it, you know, as I see it. Um, but I do not mine crypto. Um, basically, uh, the Cultivate Crypto area, we have four ways to cultivate crypto, which is one, you can mine it. Two, you can buy and hold it. Three, you can uh, trade it, buy and sell it. Four, you can earn it. Now, mining uh, is more difficult and less profitable unless you have a good energy source. So that's not as profitable these days. So I don't really do that. I have dabbled in it, but I don't really do that for a profit. Um, then two, buying and holding is best for beginners. Um, three, uh, trading, um, buying and selling is probably the best use case for crypto right now. It's very, very, very speculative, um, but you can make a lot of, uh, if you you know play those cards right. But like I said yesterday on our show, you have to be very careful with that. 
and then because you can also lose a lot of money and then four um, earning it in the future not right now because you can't earn it as consistently but earning it will be the only way to get Bitcoin in the future um, especially once we go above you know 30 50 100 K here in the future um, you know people aren't going to be buying and trading Bitcoin as much anymore once it be the price becomes more stabilized um, of course people will be if they can but if they can't they'll be trying to earn it um, so that's why I say mining crypto is not as profitable not as profitable as it used to be so let's get into the topic um, and we'll look I didn't get into altcoins yesterday either really but if anybody has an altcoin that they want to see I will by all means somebody mentioned BSV yesterday so that's why this chart is here um, I will look into any of these altcoins if you want me to um, so if you want to take a look at a particular coin throw it in the chat um, we'll jump over there and we'll look at it but otherwise let's jump into the topic um, and talk about uh, today's topic will Bitcoin support hold above 10,000 so I want to make a case for and against four digit Bitcoin in the next week or two um, so a let's start with the case for Bitcoin going below 10,000 Bitcoin getting uh, you know into the four digits okay let's do that first and EJ Ware says I want to see burst coin all right we'll do that right after the topic um, towards the end of the show um, or Bitcoin HD um, no problem we'll do both of those um, just hold with us here through the main topic over the next 15 minutes um, and then we'll do those at the end of the show um, so thank you very much for your uh, your query and if you haven't EJ um, please smash the bell at the top and subscribe to the channel um, so that we can see you here in future chats as well because it's always good to see you guys uh, jumping in and asking questions um, so um, I'll get into the topic and then I'll get into those coins so let's look at the case for four digit Bitcoin um, <laughs> so I have a little bit of a of a troll here for another guy who um, is called the magic poop cannon here on uh, trading view um, you know if you are buying and selling based on the magic poop cannon you may or may not make money um but he is a guy literally this is one of the top uh chartists if that's what they're called uh chart people on uh tradingview.com magic poop cannon has uh, 64,778 followers um believe it or not um but he's actually been a bear um, for most of this time he's been trying to call back for sub 3000 Bitcoin um, what I would like to uh, tell the magic poop cannon is he's a little bit like this he's a little bit itching for that y'all got any more than three thousand dollar bitcoins you know he's really really cracking out here really <laughs> I don't know take that for what it is but um, he, he really wants that three thousand dollar Bitcoin again um, maybe he missed out on the train um, but basically here um, he's looking for a head and shoulders um, possibility of going up to 13k then crashing back down currently we're about here right at 11.7k uh, and then he wants to see us drop very hard down over the next couple of weeks down to about 7,500 have a small bounce get that right shoulder um, here and then break down down to that low of 3,100 again and he's convinced that this will happen and uh, he keeps saying, oh, this hit my target exactly, right? He says, oh, everything's happening exactly as planned yet. Most of the things that he's been saying, because I do pay attention to him um, because he's on this platform that I use these charts on um, and he's loud, um, is that he has not been calling for this number exactly. He keeps changing his chart and all of his calls based on what's been happening. But every time it goes up, he says, oh, it's going to come back down. It's going to come back down. Um, so anyways, um, this is kind of a ridiculous example of um, somebody being a little bit extreme um, with the case for four digit Bitcoin or even you know sub 3000 Bitcoin um, so yeah don't believe everything you see take it with a grain of salt but yeah magic poop cannon follow him if you like to be honest most of these like here you have the top authors on trading view um, you know you have all these guys magic poop cannons currently number four um, <laughs> but you get all these random charts right so many charts um, and usually they have a lot of shit on them and yeah everybody has an opinion of course um, so don't take this information you know 
as is because then you'll just never know what to do, which is why you should try to understand. I mean, look at this thing, crazy. This is crazy. Look at all these like little you know notes on here and stuff, right? It's just like Jesus Christ. But um, there's so many things out there, so much information that you really can't make a decision if you purely follow other people. So follow other people with a grain of salt and then make your own decision, okay? Um, that's why I show you uh, this type of chart. Um, good morning, uh, Elijah. Uh, how's it going? It's going good. Um, Bitcoin's uh, holding strong, holding strong. Um, so that's the first case for four digit Bitcoin is magic poop cannon <laughs> showing us the head and shoulders. Uh, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. But yeah, um, that's one example of an extreme case. My, If I go to my chart, uh, case for four digit Bitcoin would be um, basically this Elliott wave here of being a one, two, three, four, and five of this final fifth wave. Um, if the two were to break down, which would mean a decisive move, like a full six to 12 hours below 10,500, if that were to happen, then that would be a basic collapse of um, this pattern. And we would have to actually say that these five waves within this wave one were actually the total five waves um, for this final fifth wave, something like that, um, which would then make us look back into the minute counts and say, hmm, does that make sense? But anyways, the price can do what it does um, different from what we expect. So anyways, if that price were to break down decisively for more than like six to 12 hours below 10,500, then I would say probably um, we have a breakdown of this pattern here. And then I would say the price of about 9,400 to 9,500 would be the next target, the next area um, that Bitcoin would go. And so anything under 10,000 right now is a good uh, discount. So if you can buy again below 10,000, great. Um, but at least put your stop loss here around 10,000 to 10,500 um, so that you can keep your profit if you're currently uh, in this. If you're looking to buy, um, look for un under 11,000 here if you can, um, or especially below 10,000, um, that would be a good buy area, especially this 9,400 to 500 would be a very good discount right now. Um, so that's the next case um, for sub. 10K Bitcoin would be probably somewhere between nine and 10K. If we were to look on this uh, chart here on the longer term weekly chart, um, we have this resistance turned support at about 10,111. Um, so that area probably would hold, but if it broke down, then that brings us down to the top of this wave three as the next support at about 9,100. Um, so that area there between nine to 10,000 could be a strong uh, buy area. Breaking down below this last uh, area where we had a lot of buying action, um, basically below 9,000, I would see as probably quite difficult because we saw Bitcoin in a bull market go up through these resistance zones like butter. And Bitcoin, if you look at its entire history, right? Like we talked about yesterday, um, it goes up more than it goes down. So when we are in a bull market, the amount that it can go to the downside is a lot more difficult of a path. Um, so breaking down below that last area of extreme buying action would be quite difficult in my opinion. At least it wouldn't happen overnight. Um, so anywhere between nine to 10,000 or nine to 11,000 would be a very good buy right now if you're currently not in the market or if you're looking to add more Satoshi to your current holdings. Um, so that's the case for um, sub 10K Bitcoin, four digit Bitcoin. Uh, the other thing that I do wanna remind you guys of is here we have basically from July 17th until now, these last two weekly charts, um, we were praying for 10K Bitcoin here around the week of the 17th until now. So how long is that? That's been like, what, 10 days, 11 days, um, right? And we're, we've are we gone up to 13 and then back down here to 11. So really, um, you know, people crying about this quick move between 11 and 13. Yesterday, I mentioned 
one to two thousand dollar price moves in Bitcoin will become the new normal. Um, so this is not that much compared to the previous price history of Bitcoin. It's not that big of a move, and we're still keeping strong. So um, you know, keep perspective. Look at where we have been. And yes, we have made some insane moves over the last month. But if you got in down here between you know under eight k, just keep moving your stop loss up, and don't think. You know, some people get into the mindset of, oh, it went up to 13K and now it's down to 11 and a half. I lost so much money. Well, if you got in at 8K, you didn't lose anything. You're still in pure profit. Just keep moving up your stop loss. It's very simple. Um, you don't have, this is not, these profits are not your money until you take them out, until you actually liquidate your Bitcoin for dollars. And then once you liquidate your Bitcoin for dollars and Bitcoin keeps going up, then you're like, well, I wish I would have kept my Bitcoin and I'm down Bitcoin, but I'm up dollars, right? So which is a win? You have to determine that before you begin. Do you want dollars or do you want Bitcoin or do you want both? If you want both, um, sometimes you can't have it both ways all the time, um, but just keep moving up your stop loss and then you can kind of forget about it um, for a while. Um, so it's kind of a it is a hard mindset to have because it's kind of like when you go to a foreign country and you're dealing with a different currency. Um, Bitcoin is a new currency. It is a new way of exchanging value. Um, so it is kind of a mind bend for a lot of people. Um, so just keep that in mind um, as we move around here. Um, then let's make the, co uh, the case for the bull case um, for Bitcoin not going down to the four digits, four digits, staying above 10K. Um, which actually, believe it or not, uh, I have more points for why that is probably the case. Um, so the first one is basically, um, we have not really seen any FOMO, any fear of missing out from the retail traders. Retail traders being you and me, normal people. Basically, this whole run of Bitcoin, um, of course there have been some normal people getting in, but for the most part, it's not in the news. It's not big on TV compared to what it was in 2017. Most of this seems to be smart money, uh, institutional money, people with millions of dollars buying Bitcoin. I think some of the buy orders that people have shown on different exchanges show people trying to buy, you know, 10 Bitcoin at a time, 100 Bitcoin at a time. Some They may be groups of people, they may be individuals, but it, for any case, um, most of this price action that we've seen so far at the beginning stages of this bull market has not been through the fear of missing out. It's mainly been through um, actually smart money. And so if you're buying when the smart money is buying, you're probably in a good position and you should just move up your stop loss. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we'll probably hold here is because if FOMO does start and you know normal people start talking about it, your sister talks about it or somebody around your water cooler starts asking you a lot of questions about it. I've heard a few cases of that. So that is, you know, somewhat there. Um, but if that starts happening like a lot, um, then that's a sign that the price will start pumping a, a little bit. So that could keep us above the 10 K area here. Um, also, um, just looking at the, uh, fear greed index, right? Um, so fear Right now we're still in greed, but it's lower amount of greed. So we still are in fear um, for a bull market. Low level of greed is essentially fear in a bull market, it seems uh, on this chart, which means that people feel their profits, you know, disappeared during this last, uh, what is it? Last 24 hours of this price decline, right? Oh, I was up so much, but now it's down, but I'm still up in profit you're still making money, first world problems. Uh, so that kind of fear happening from here um, is actually a good sign for Bitcoin being able to coil up and then take off again. Um, also, if we look at a lot of the cryptocurrencies out here, a lot of these other coins are not increasing that much. Ethereum has been steady at $300. Uh, Litecoin actually has gone down about $30 um, or $20, $30. Um, a lot of these altcoins are not really pumping. Um, usually when Bitcoin gets to a top, um, a lot of the altcoin, a lot of money goes out of Bitcoin into the altcoins and then back. Um, and then the whole market declines. Um, but that's not happening right now. Um, so since the altcoins are not pumping, 
Um, that's another reason for why Bitcoin is still the strongest, why we still have this 62, 63% dominance of the market right now. Um, another point is in the last bull market for Bitcoin, um, if we look at the long-term chart here, just let me zoom it out here and let me put it, oh, it is on a weekly. Um, so if we look at this long-term chart um, for Bitcoin, um, basically um, Bitcoin led the way from 2015, January of 2015 until March of 2017. Bitcoin increased the most compared to more other altcoins during this time. And then the altcoins took over for the final leg, the final pump up um, from the beginning of 2017 till the end of 2017. And that was the ICO market, right? Um, so Bitcoin usually leads the way at the beginning, um, which means we're still in very, very early stages here. Um, and if Bitcoin's leading the way, people are not going to be selling their Bitcoin that much. Um, people are mainly going to be buying um, during these dips, um, which probably could keep us above the 10K here. So these are just some reasons. They're not, they're not always the most technical reasons, but they're giving us you know, some clues as to why we'll stay above 10K. Um, another one is if we look at the short-term price action again here. Um, Let's actually, I want to do, show you guys something kind of fun. For me, this is fun. I don't know. As a person who looks at charts, I like this. I usually go from the, uh, the highest to the lowest uh, minute mark. So going from a month and a week down to the minutes um, to show, you know, usually that's how you should look at a market. But I want to go the opposite way. I want to go down to the smallest minute mark on Bitcoin right now. And then I want to go up here to the, the larger day periods so that we can see um, how strong Bitcoin looks in the short term and then in the long term. So if we go down to the 30 minute mark, I don't want to go below 30 minutes. What does Bitcoin look like? Okay, so let's zoom this up a little bit. So here we have a few things um, which are bearish for the next 30 minutes, meaning the next 30 minutes. Um, good morning, Habnar. Nice to see you in here. Um, the next 30 minutes could be um, bad for Bitcoin, meaning we have this um, here, this 50 day moving average or 50 period moving average in yellow at the bottom. And then we have this 200 day or 200 period moving average here in the middle. And then the 50 period moving average, uh, or sorry, the 100 period moving average, uh, the blue line here at the top. That is not a completely bearish nor bullish scenario. That's basically neutral. The yellow should be on the top, the red or orange should be on the bottom and the blue should be in the middle. So at least, you know, for the short term here in the next 30 minutes, that's relatively bearish, meaning that's why over the last one hour, Bitcoin has been gone, going down from about testing that 12,000 mark now to 11,700, which percentage wise is not that big. So it's not really anything to be too concerned about. Also, if I throw on the Bollinger Bands, we have a little bit of a pinch coming meaning trying to get back above that 12,100 mark in the next 30 minutes will be extremely difficult. Um, also going down further than that 10,500 mark will also be extremely difficult in the next 30 minutes. Then if we go back up to the one hour, what does that look like? And it's kind of taking this Russian doll thing and going opposite is we still have on the one hour chart the same pattern with the moving averages as the 30 minute chart meaning that it is still kind of neutral or a little bit bearish, um, a little bit negative. And, but we have this 12 EMA, this short-term support, holding us a little bit above that 11,500 here, at least for the next one hour. Um, so that's a little bit better. Then if we go to the two hour chart, things will load here. And things begin all of a sudden, once we get to a higher time frame, start things start to look a lot better. So we have a bullish pattern finally here with the orange uh, 200 uh, period moving average at the bottom, the 100 in the middle, and the 50 period moving average here at the top. Basically that 50 period moving average on the two hour chart is what's holding the price where we are now at 11,700. 
and that uh, 12 EMA period here holding as short term support here on the two hour chart. So over the next two hours, oscillating between 11,572 and uh, where we are now um, is likely. Um, and on the Bollinger Bands, we have some pinch, but we could go up to 13,000 or we could go as low as 10,300 in the next two hours and we would still, you know, be relatively okay. Um, then if we go up to the four hour chart, let it load, let it load even more bullish. So we have still this bullish pattern with the moving averages and strong support on the four hour of the top, uh, 50 period moving average at $11,050. Um, and we have the short term support, which we have regained uh, in the last four hours currently. So um, things look good between 11,100 and the current price um, on the four hour chart. Um, then we look at the six hour chart, which the six hour chart is the best chart to look at for short term, uh, meaning like intraday kind of trading. Um, and we have the bullish so, you know, bullish moving averages holding this uh, support, which we currently have our stop loss of, you know, 10,500 basically that's supporting that. And we have this short term EMA also holding the current price where we're at. So you might see a pattern here already between all of these charts, meaning the short term, the one hour to 30 minutes, the price could go down. But beyond that, anything above 10,500, we're still basically safe. Um, everything is holding above that price right now on almost all the charts except or, except for under one hour. And the um, Bollinger Bands here also support us above 10,100 and then have a kind of a limit here at about 14,000. Um, and then if we go on to the longer term timeframes, the 12 hour chart, also bullish, but you know, uh, here they have more on the downside, but um, usually, these, we haven't gotten really close yet um, down to this bottom area, but this shows um, that that 9,004 or 300 area could be strong support, but we definitely have that strong short-term support here at about 11,500. So, and then if we go all the way to the one day chart, we have a very similar pattern um, where you can see this support holding here at about 10,800, um, which we've pierced only very little. Um, but we also have the moving averages as very bullish. Um, so that's the best way to look at it. Usually we want to go from the biggest to the smallest, but if you go from the smallest to the biggest, you can also get a, a good perspective. Um, but basically that means um, that right now um, we're getting good support above at least 10,500, if not 10,100. Um, and in the short term here, probably at least above 11,500. Um, which is one of the reasons why I think if we do go down, um, we still have that uh, second wave that we can retrace down to this 10,005 or 600 area and still be relatively good um, in our analysis here. Um, then the last thing which keeps us above 10,000 is basically if we look at the long term of this current trend, it looks like we had that one wick test of 13,000 um, 800 and the price really wants to kind of keep moving up here. Um, so the price is showing that it goes up easier than it goes down. Um, you know, we saw over the last three weeks going from, uh, 7,800 to basically almost double of that of seven, uh, 13,800. Um, that whole price range, um, basically being very easy. And then the last $2,000 of going down, being, you know, harder. Um, so it's easier to go up than to go down in the bull market. So Bitcoin wants to try to test um, that 13,800 area again, I believe. Don't take it as gospel, but that's what it looks like. Um, and then if it tests that area and breaks it again, then we could go up towards 20,000. Um, Bitcoin is looking snailish. Yeah, I mean, it depends on your perspective, right? So if you're looking at the one hour to, um, you know, six hour chart, yes, it's looking boring. 
because it hasn't moved a thousand dollars in the last 24 hours um you know it makes us snooze because we're millennials and we expect things right now <laughs> but you know in reality compared to any other market in the world this is an amazing pace this is very volatile um you know for most people um so actually it's good that we get this sideways action every once in a while to kind of take some time to cool off um let people get a little fearful and then buy in again uh and keep going up um what should we watch for um so the last thing that we should watch for is basically this bounce um between here so i think we're going to bounce between this 11,500 and 13,800 here for a little bit before bitcoin really decides what it wants to do we may test that ten thousand dollar area again here in the short term this ten thousand five hundred or maybe ten thousand two hundred um at maximum in the next maybe 24 hours to over the weekend and then i think we'll see some buying action and pushing the price back up here and then next week everybody will be, will be happy again and will be satiated with their short term um you know profit taking but don't look at this on the short term like i said yesterday Look at this from the highest possible angle first. What is the ultimate goal? Keep your eye on the prize, this uh, you know above $50,000 Bitcoin here over the next couple of years. That's what we wanna look at. This stuff that's happening, this $1,000 price moves within you know the last 24 hours is the new normal. This is the new normal and compared to percentage changes in Bitcoin price in the past, it is not that much. Um, so if you are new to Bitcoin, you should only be trading or looking, um, oops, not that one. You should only be trading and looking based on the long-term trends. So look at the chart. If I turn, were to turn it to a monthly scale, right? One thing you will notice also on the monthly scale is that Bitcoin's highest price with at a, as a full body candle on the monthly scale is actually, oh God, 13,800 or 13,900. Wow, that's exactly where the price hit and then broke down in the last 24 hours. The price between 13,900 and that 20,000 that it was the highest, those on the monthly candles were what we call wicks, very short-term price action. So on the monthly, the strongest resistance of an all-time high is actually about this 3,008 to 900 area which is not a surprise as to why that price got rejected exactly at that price point is because that was our first test. I believe we will try to test it again. And that is truly, if you're actually um, a novice trader, if you look at it on the monthly scale, that's the what we would call the all time high on a monthly full body candle is actually that 14,000. If we break above 14,000, it's gonna be really easy to test that 20,000 compared to, um, you know, uh, the weekly or daily charts. Um, so that's gives you also some perspective. So that's why I recommend if you're new, look at charting based on the monthly, weekly, and maybe daily scale. Don't go out down into the, the hourly or the minutes, um, because that'll just freak you out. Um, but that's basically, um, the last case why, uh, Bitcoin will still be bullish is because, um, it is testing that basically all time high on the monthly. And then uh, we want to break, try to break through that here in the next week or two. Um, also in the news, um, the CME futures have expired um, basically today, which is also a possible reason for the last $2,000 price decline over the last 24 hours. Um, so once those have expired, take a couple days, take the weekend, people will come back, start putting in new CME futures contracts, either on the short or the long side, and new institutional money will begin betting again uh, on the next bull phase of Bitcoin. Um, so take that all for what it's worth. And then let's definitely go in uh, to EJ's coins because he asked for a couple of coins and I do want to look at those. Uh, if you have any other uh, you know, uh, coins that you guys want me to look at before we finish up here, let me know. So EJ, he also asked, do you think it's bet, uh, do you think is the best mining protocol in your opinion? Uh, proof of work. Um, definitely. Um, I mean, Bitcoin is, um, how it's designed is the only thing that stood the test of time. Um, so let's look at the coins that he asked for it, which are burst coin and Bitcoin HD. This is going to be fun. So I've never heard of either coin. So let's look at coin market cap first. Where are they? 
right, of the 2,292 cryptocurrencies, we have Burst, which, where are you, Burst? Burst, as it says, is B-U-R-S-T. It only has 17 million in market cap, which is not that much. It's currently almost one penny. It's down 12% over the last 24 hours. Um, and it's been around for a while. It's been around since 2014 or so. So yeah, all time high on burst um, was 13 cents, all time low. Yeah, just not even, not even a pulse at the all time low, very, very low in 2015. So let's look at burst. What exchanges is it on? It's on, it's only on three exchanges. Oh my God, that's a bad sign. So Burst is on three markets, on Bitrix, Upbit, and Livecoin, and you can only trade it with Bitcoin. And the 24-hour volume is less than $200,000, meaning it doesn't have almost any liquidity. It's very, very risky to trade this type of coin. Um, so I would not touch this type of coin with a 10-foot pole. Um, in my personal trading, um, I wouldn't. Um, but let's take a look at it on the Bitrix chart because that's probably where it has the most liquidity and the most um, uh, data. So B-U-R-S-T to Bitcoin. Let's look at it compared to the dollar first. So compared to the dollar on the daily, one, the main test of a shitcoin or altcoin or any coin here is has it moved mainly, where has it moved since December? of 2018 up or down since bitcoin hit the bottom of the bear market has it moved up or down and well burst coin is actually up so since december of 2017 at that point it was about um, a third of a penny and now it's almost one penny in terms of dollars um, so that means it's gone up about three times uh, since that period it did have a dip but it's gone up since then so burst coin starting to try to build its own bull market here. And the moving averages moving from a bearish scenario to trying to build a bullish scenario here on the daily chart. So it's I wouldn't trade it because of how low the liquidity is, but also um, the profit is not that extreme to be that good. For these shit coins, you wanna see like a 10 times increase or at least like a five times increase um, compared to Bitcoin. Um, here, you know, it's it's not better than Bitcoin. So um, that's why it's not that interesting. Let's look at it, though, compared to Bitcoin on that chart. And that's a totally different story. It's still in a bear market compared to Bitcoin. So since December, it was at around 111 Satoshi. Now it's down to 72 Satoshi and it had a low of 32 Satoshi. So this is like the the definition of not even a penny stock of like a sub sub penny stock in you know the crypto sphere um, and all of these moving averages compared to bitcoin are still bearish um, so just on a very basic level i would not want to touch this coin i wouldn't want to use it to increase my bitcoin and i wouldn't want it to increase my dollars because it's not worth it stay with the macro caps stay with bitcoin litecoin ethereum binance coin any of those coins which are doing well um, burst coin not my cup of tea um, and then let's take a look at uh, the next one, which he said was Bitcoin Bitcoin HD. Um, and we also had another one uh, that somebody put in there. So I'll look at that too. Um, so let's look at Bitcoin HD. I have never heard of this thing. When I put Bitcoin in the, in for coin market cap, I get Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin Gold, Bitcoin Diamond, and Lightning Bitcoin, which I also never heard of that one. That's pretty funny. Bitcoin to you, Bitcoin trade, and Mercado Bitcoin, but I do not see Bitcoin HD. Uh, let me just put in HD and I get HDAC. So mm, I don't know if Bitcoin HD exists or if it goes by a different ticker symbol. And when I put it here in the uh, trading view, I don't get anything that looks like Bitcoin HD in here. So double check that one and get back to me if you wanna look at that one here. I don't, I can't find it for some reason on CoinMarketCap or TradingView, EJ. Uh, try BHD, okay, let's try BHD. Uh, there we go. 
That was the ticker symbol is BHD, you're right. That looks a little bit better in the fact that it's $31, but warning sign, warning sign, there is no market cap that's known according to coin market cap and it's currently 1,876 out of 2,292 coins. Pretty, pretty big warning signal, uh, meaning that it has low liquidity. It is on three exchanges as well, but has literally less than $2,000 or less than $3,000 of volume trading in the last 24 hours. Or no, sorry, no, so no, I was wrong there. Um, uh, a million, maybe less than two or $3 million um, in liquidity. So maybe better than the last coin that we looked at. Um, let's look at the charts uh, compared to Bitcoin, um, BHD. Because if we look at it compared to Bitcoin, that will give us a quick look. And that's, let's look at it on Coinil, if we can. I don't know if I can find it here, uh, the actual charts. Because um, when I put B BHD, it looks like I get all these other things from their other stock markets. Um, looks like TradingView may not have the best access to that coin. So I don't know if I can look at it here, but if we look at it just on the chart that trade uh, coin market cap gives us, basically since December, where was December? Oh, this chart, oh, it basically that's why. It's only really existed since May, the end of May until now, that's probably why the it doesn't come up on trading views. It's basically uh, a new coin. Um, so any of these new coins, usually it, it takes about 90 to two, 250 days before we get enough data in its price action to be able to start trading it um, properly with enough you know idea of if it'll do well or not. But basically the price compared to Bitcoin has been relatively stable. Um, the price compared to dollars has gone up from $30 to a maximum of 40 with the current price of 31. So I would say there's not enough information on this coin yet to really know if we can trade it. If you're a person who likes ICOs and new coins, by all means, you can gamble. But that's what I would feel this is, is a gamble. Um, not enough information. Um, yeah. Um, well, we'll just stick to the coin market cap here. Just basically, since it's so new, there's not enough information. And then we'll take a look at the last one. Uh, what do you think about proof of capacity? Um, well, basically, there's like proof of authority, proof of work, proof of all these other things that have come out recently. And when I look at proof of authority, um, Microsoft put that out. And um, they started looking that, at that for their Azure cloud system using uh, cryptocurrencies and, and uh, blockchain, which some of these things which are very brand new, like proof of capacity or proof of uh, authority and stuff like this, to me are more centralization um, than decentralization. So I, te I tend to not like them, but I haven't honestly looked into proof of capacity yet. So I don't know um, in all honesty, but uh, my first gut reaction is any of these new proof of X, Y, Z, um, tend not to be as good as proof of work or even not even as good as proof of stake. Um, let's look at the last one. The Young Bachelor, he asks us, how about Electrum, uh, Electronium? Uh, let me copy and paste that into coin market cap and we'll look at that coin as the last coin to look at for today because we're running a little bit. Oops. Do you know the ticker symbol for that? Well, if I just put Electro, does that come up with anything? I don't get it with coin market cap at least and let's try it with trading view oh i do get electronium here on hoboy hit btc um so let's look at that compared to bitcoin on hoboy the chinese exchange is it gonna load I keep pressing it, nothing happens. Hmm. ETN, let's try putting it there, ETN.
some reason that's not pulling it up on here. Mm. Looks like we're having technical difficulties getting to the price of electronium. Yeah. I put ETN, but a lot of stuff comes up on the actual stock market. And if I put like compared to BTC, oh, there we go. Maybe that one will work. Ah, we might've got it. We may have got it. Ooh, this looks bad right out the gate. First of all, it started in March of this year and compared to Bitcoin since its inception, uh, on in this case the exchange Huboy, uh, it has gone down from 184 Satoshi down to 42, and we don't have enough data here to really show any pattern except for that it is crashing down to you know one Satoshi or something like that. So in my opinion, uh, I wouldn't touch it. Very very easy one to look at. Um, <laughs> YouTube revealed proof of workout. I think. I think Cody's probably not here anymore, but Cody needs some proof of workout to make sure that he's really working out when he's listening to this channel to make sure he's getting those uh, uh, chesticles in order. <laughs> but yeah, we need some proof of workout there. Um, so yeah, anyways, guys, I, I love that you guys put in the chat some, uh, you know, uh, you know, things you want looked at, to be honest. Most of these coins, when we do look at them, uh, most of these altcoins, most of these shit coins do not look good in general compared to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is the the coin of dominance at the moment. It is dominating the market at 63%. Just a couple of weeks ago, it, it was 10% lower at 52%. So if you really want to make money at trading, you know, Bitcoin's the thing to be in right now. Um, all these other ones right now are really uh, very, very speculative. And we haven't really gotten into, um, you know, a... Uh, alt season since April. The alt season was from December until April and then Bitcoin started to take over. Um, I have a good meme for that. Uh, so we have this one here, um, which is it's rally time and no Bitcoin. No, the altcoins look like they're going to get beaten. Uh, uh, you know, they are the children of Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin's coming in to give them a beating right now. Um, so basically, um, yeah, just stay with Bitcoin for the moment because uh, trading these other things is basically gambling. Uh, Cody is in the house. Lamo, I like it. Uh, yeah, Jim Coin, that Jim Coin, that's what we need. Um, so yeah, I I have been taking up a little bit of extra time today just because the chat is going well and people are asking some good questions, having some fun. Um, but um, I'll let you guys go here for today. Um, I'm gonna start off on my weekend, so. Uh, have a great uh, weekend. Have a, uh, a good time. Just stay level-headed with Bitcoin. Um, I will send out a newsletter this weekend um, for the first time since April. Uh, sorry about that for people who've been on the newsletter for a while. Um, I've been mainly focusing on YouTube and social media, but I will start sending that out. So if you're new to this, go down to my website, cultivatecrypto.com, which is in the description below. Um, and you can sign up for our newsletter and I'll be sending weekend updates um, uh, about the price of Bitcoin. Um, so feel free to do that. Otherwise, uh, live long and prosper, you know, as Spock says, and uh, have a good weekend. And we'll see you here on Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern. Have a good one and uh, keep it real. Um, and I don't know what that link is, EJ, but uh, maybe it's a topic about one of the coins you're mentioning. Um, so yeah, Feel free to click on that link if you want to see what EJ is talking about there. I might do that myself. So Tony says, have a good weekend, guys. Uh, see you on Monday. Have a good one. Talk to you again soon. Live long and prosper.